Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part two of Hidden. Part one was about the Lord basically hiding himself from the sheep who refused to repent and follow his ways. This is going to be more on the Lord hiding his sheep. You know, part one, people think, oh no, that's the goats. No, 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 no. No. God doesn't, God doesn't do, God doesn't have to hide himself from the goats. The goats hide themselves from God. God does, can and does, hide himself from unrepentant sheep. His people! People don't believe that, but they think, oh, you just, you know, make, we, we, we're going to make the choice. And, you know, let me tell you something. Jesus said, well, let's see. Matthew 7, 21, Jesus said, Not everyone, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Maybe we should find out what the will of the Lord is in heaven is and do it, huh? Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Sounds like TBN. And in thy name cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? Ooh. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Probably the four scariest words you'll ever hear in your life. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Let's see. That's 11 words. People are starting to notice numbers uh, in scriptures. You know, the evil ones love that little number 33. 33 people killed in massive car accidents. Uh, yeah, you'll, you'll notice that kind of stuff. In Luke chapter 6 and verse 46, Jesus said, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Yeah, why is that? So, there's going to be people... Big trouble. But there are going to be God's remnant who are going to be hidden. Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 83. A psalm, a song or psalm of Asaph. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. Uh, wait a minute. He's talking about God here. And he's saying thine enemies. You mean God has enemies? But, but... But I hear preachers say that God loves everybody. God has enemies. And they make a tumult. What's a tumult? It's like a riot, I guess. So, For lo, thine enemies, whose enemies? God's enemies, make a tumult. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. God's enemies took counsel, 
Crafty Council. Sneaky. They have taken Crafty Council against thy people. Do you know God's got people? And God's got enemies. Boy, you'll never hear that stuff, huh? In a church, so-called. And consulted against thy hidden ones. They took crafty counsel and consulted against thy hidden ones. Hidden ones. H-I-D-D-E-N. Hidden. They have said, come. Who? The evil ones. They have said, come. And let us cut them off from being a nation. That word nation there is the same word that they use for Gentile, but it's talking about Israel. It's the word goy. Yeah. Come, let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Remember, these are God's hidden ones. Hidden ones. Why am I having such a trouble saying that? Verse 5. For they, the evil ones, have consulted together with one consent. They're of one mind here. Let's take a look at Revelation 17 real quick. You know, to understand the Bible, you need to know two things. One, who God's enemies are. And who's God's true chosen people are, his, cho his hidden ones. And the key to the future is the past. Yeah. Let the Bible explain the Bible. And that only works with the King James. And as I understand it, they're even changing the King James now. The prince. Find the oldest Bibles you can find and... Or uh, get yourself a pure Cambridge edition, download it on the computer, maybe even print your own. This way you don't have to worry about uh, the people that print the Satanic Bible printing your King James Bible, you know. <laughs> but uh, Revelation 17, verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, well, these are God's angels, and these vials are uh, God's judgment. And talked with me, saying unto me, Come th hither, and I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. Oh, yeah. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. You want to drink of the wine of the blood of Jesus? Or do you want to drink the wine of the whore and her fornication? Verse 3. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And everybody will point to the Vatican and say, yep, these are the Vatican's colors. Well, yeah. They adopted them. But if you read the book of Leviticus, these are the colors of the priesthood that God laid out. How many people read the book of Leviticus? And, you know, Christians. Very few. Not exactly my favorite book of the Bible, but, you know. And God said that Babylon, physical Babylon, was a golden cup in his hand. 
Yeah. Believe it or not, he did. And what did Babylon do? They carried away Jerusalem into captivity as punishment for their sins and evil, for their wickedness. Read the book of Jeremiah. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints. Mm. Guess what? There's a certain group of people that have a book and it even has Babylon, Babylonian in the title. It's the Babylonian tall, T-A-L-L, -L, second word, mud, M-U-D. Take those two words, put them together, and remove an L. It's the Babylonian, there you go. They call it the tradition of the elders. Jesus condemned a certain group for their traditions and the traditions of the elders. And this is exactly what he was talking about. But I got to talk in code so the sense soars. Don't uh, delete my channel. God willing. I keep having people write me and tell me uh, everybody else's channel is getting deleted. We're surprised you're still on the air, Bob. Yeah, me too. God must really... It's not time yet. So, either that or I'm a plant. <laughs> Some people jokingly say I'm part of Project Zephyr. Well, you know, uh, FEMA hasn't sent me my check yet, so what can I tell you? And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints. The woman was drunk with murder of God's people and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Hmm. You know, John was like looking at this going, wow, this is really pretty intense and well set up. You know, this is, hey, this is Satan's kingdom. You got to give him credit. He's been around for probably around 6,000 years, and he's been planning this for a long time. He's been watching, and he knows us very well. And he knows how to slither his people into the positions of power. Because God's people tolerate evil. We tolerate evil. There was a time when people wouldn't tolerate evil. And evildoers were afraid. They're not afraid anymore. They have no fear. They have no fear of God. They have no fear of the church. None. And the angel said unto me, Now remember when John said, and, I, and when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman. Now this is the whore, not the church, and of the beast that carrieth her which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit 
and go into perdition. Do you know what perdition means? It means to fall. When Satan fell from heaven, he went into perdition. Judas Iscariot was called a son of perdition. And there is going to be the man of sin, the son of perdition. Paul, I think it's Paul. Oh, I got to look it up. Yeah, it was Paul. Sometimes I got to pause and look things up. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. You know, there's actually people on that will try to convince you that this happened in the past. Yeah, this happened in the past. I'm like, what? When did Jesus come in glory? And all the everybody's eyes saw him. And he set up his kingdom and the new Jerusalem coming down. Uh, you know, I just, I don't get it. People won't read. You know, they'll, they'll read anything except for the Bible. You know, they'll read all these heretics on TBN and watch things on television. But, you know, read the Bible? Eh, why waste my time? They'll tell you. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him. Uh, Jesus came. Were we gathered together with him? No. Didn't happen. It's got to be future. But you can show this to these heretics and... They'll, they'll explain it away. Oh, Jesus came already. But were we gathered together unto him? No. Oh, Jesus is ruling and reigning in our hearts. And this wicked world is God's kingdom. I don't think so. Verse 2. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled. Don't be bothered. Don't be troubled. Neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Remember, Peter, 2 Peter said, A day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is a day. To the Lord, his coming is, you know, a couple days. That's soon, right? As that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. Read Matthew 24. Read Mark 13. Jesus warned deception. Be not deceived. There's people who don't even know what the difference between a man and a woman is today. Well, they know, but they want to confuse the weak-minded. God laid it out in the first two chapters of Genesis. Male and female. How hard is that? Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, what day? The second coming. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. A uh, falling away first. Are we there? I think so. I think we're pretty... I think we're pretty close, but hey, that's that's just one guy's opinion that's read the Bible once or twice. So, you know. For that day shall not come except a coming, a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed. Has the man of sin be revealed? I don't think so. I bet the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Perdition, to fall. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Did that happen in 70 AD? Did a Roman general go to the temple and claim he's God? And then tell the emperor of Rome, you've got to worship me. 
I think the Emperor of Rome would have had somebody cut his head off. But, hey, that's just me. But there's people that will actually tell you that this happened in the past. But Jesus didn't come and we weren't gathered together unto him. So what can I tell you? Revelation 17, verse 6. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, okay, verse 8. The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. I think they're the same entity here of Thessalonians and Revelation. I think they're the same one. There's people that will argue with me and say you're wrong, but... One day we'll find out, won't we? The beast that thou sawest was and is not shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Goats. Names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Oh, Bob, that sounds like, like, like you're a Calvinist. I, I don't know. I, I don't read Calvin. I read the Bible. You know, they, they, people hate, people hate that God, uh, they hate the idea of election. You know, you, you know, when there's an election, people go and they vote and they pick somebody. You know, well, the Bible talks about God having an elect, an election. God has a chosen people. Yeah, of course, they want you to think that God has a chosen people, but everybody can be part of that. But right here, it tells you there's their names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Of course, they want you to think that if you believe, God pencils your name in. Oh, okay, uh, Chaplain Bob wasn't my chosen people, but but he believes in me now, so I'm going to write his name. I'm going to pencil his name in. That's not that's not how I look at it. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Do you know that God's people's names were written in the book of life? From the foundation of the world. From the beginning. You weren't even born yet. In Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5, God told Jeremiah, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before Jeremiah was even born, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest out of the womb, I sanctified thee. Sanctified, what does that mean? It means to set, be set apart. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And they want us to be able to kill children. Some places in the womb and some places say, well, you know, eh. 29, 30 days after they're born, you, you know, you decide you don't want your kid. Eh, no problem. Hey, if it was up to me, uh, let's be able to kill them up to their 18th birthday. I bet your kids would behave a lot better if they knew uh, parents could get rid of them, huh? Why 29 days or 30 days? Make it 18 years. You know? Oh, I don't know. Isaiah 44, 2, Thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. Wow. Yeah. God formed Jeremiah in the belly before he was even born. Before he came out of the womb, he was sanctified and ordained to be a prophet. Boy, that's some heavy-duty stuff there.
Revelation 17, 8. The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. Hmm. Let's take a look at Romans chapter 9. Here's why they hate Paul. Another reason. The book of Romans. He's not writing to the book of the Jews. He's writing to the Romans. The church at Rome, which left the Lord a long time ago, sadly. Verse 9. I mean, chapter 9, verse 1. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites. These people in the flesh are Israelites. To whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God... We're supposed to give service to God and the promises. Whose are the fathers and of whom are concerning the flesh? Christ came. Christ was God in the flesh. He came. And of whom as concerning the flesh? Christ came. Who is over all? God blessed forever. Amen. Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect. For they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That's right out of the book of Genesis, by the way. Who was of Abraham? Ishmael. But Ishmael was not to be the father of the promised seed. God blessed Ishmael, and you keep that in mind. God blessed Ishmael, but he did not make him the chosen seed. Very important. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. Well, guess what? Esau was of the seed of Abraham. But he married into the Canaanites, the Hittites. Yeah. He also married a, a daughter of Ishmael. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh. The children of the flesh. These are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. The children of promise, not the children of the flesh. For this is the word of promise, at this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. Sarah was like 90 years old. Oh, you're going to have a son, Sarah. Yeah, right. Uh... Yeah, right, Abraham. Sure. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. Wait a minute. Our father Isaac? Paul's writing here to the Romans. Were some of the Romans Israelites too? Absolutely. Listen to this, verse 11. Now remember, Rebecca and Isaac had two children, Esau and Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Verse 11. For the children being not yet born, the children aren't even born yet, having, uh, neither having done any good or evil, the children weren't even born. They, they didn't do anything good or anything evil. That the purpose of God, according to election, election, 
might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. Who calls? God does. What? God calls? Absolutely. In John 14, verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no man, no woman, no child, no daughter, no nothing. No man cometh unto me, unto the, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. And then in John 6, 44, no man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. If the Father doesn't send you to Christ, you're out of luck, baby, or buddy, you're out of luck. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up on the last day. Back to Romans 9, verse 11. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, unto who? Rebecca. The elder shall serve the younger. Esau was the firstborn. He was the elder. And he will serve the younger. Jacob Israel, or Jacob Israel. Verse 13. This is a direct quote out of Malachi chapter 1. God speaking, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. But, but, Chaplain Bob, God loves everybody. Uh, <laughs> that's not even true, even if you're a Satanist. <laughs> uh, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Well, in the original Hebrew and in the original Greek, what that means is God loved Jacob more than Esau. Uh, no, no, no. Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. If God doesn't show you mercy, you are out of luck, buddy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for the same person, purpose, have I raised thee up that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. God sent the plagues upon Egypt as a challenge to the gods of the Egypt, the god of the frogs, the god of the flies, the god of the Nile. Oh yeah. God made a challenge to the gods of Egypt and they were powerless against the god of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Verse 18. Wherefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy? And... Whom he will, he hardeneth. When the God hardens your heart and sears your conscience with a, a hot iron, read Romans chapter 1. When you love your sin more than you love the Lord, he will sear your conscience with a hot iron. You won't hear the heart, call of God. Verse 19. That will say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? You're going to resist God's will? 
Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Why did you make me this way, God? You ever heard those that are into same-sex marriage say, God made me this way. I was born this way. Conscience is seared with a hot iron. I could read Romans chapter 1, but that's hate speech anymore. Why hast thou made me thus? Verse 21. Hath not the power potter over uh, hath not the potter power over the clay? Of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and unto and uh, uh, another unto dishonor? Listen to this carefully. What if God, willing to show his wrath, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endureth with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? Boy, that's some scary words. I don't know about you, but I, I get chills when I. Oof. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering? the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, vessels of mercy, which he hath afore prepared unto glory, even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the nations. Oh, well, they said Gentiles, but it's the same word. Verse 25, as he saith also in Osi, that's the Greek rendering of the word Hosea, one of the minor prophets in the Old Testament. I did an entire study on Hosea. Wonderful book. Wonderful book. Nobody will read it, but it's a wonderful book. A lot of prophecy. The Lord said, I will call them my people which were not my people. And her beloved, which was not beloved. Why? Because in Jeremiah 3, 8, God said he divorced Israel, his people. Not Judah, but he divorced Israel. And then in Jeremiah 31, 31, he said that he would remarry his people. He divorced them, but he's going to remarry them. Because the bridegroom died. Israel was now a widow without hope. But then, Israel's going to be remarried to a husband, Christ. I will call them my people which were not my people, and her, and her beloved which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. And they'll tell and the churches will tell you, oh well, that's not Israel. Yes, it is. Jeremiah 3 8, God divorced Israel. Look it up. Look up Jeremiah 31 31. Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel. Isaiah. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea. A remnant shall be saved. A remnant shall be saved. That's small people. A remnant shall be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. When the Lord comes back in glory, he's going to make short work of the space force that's probably being created so that they can fight Christ in the air. <laughs> it's going to be, he's going to make short work of it. Yeah. And as Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed, we had been as Sodom and been like unto Gomorrah. What shall we say then? that the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness 
have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. Faith. Why are what, what do you faith in what? Faith in the, the works of Christ. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, you want to follow Moses or do you want to follow Jesus? You want to follow Christ or you want to follow Moses? Nothing wrong with Moses. But the law of Moses doesn't save anybody. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not obtained to the law of, of righteousness. Wherefore, you know, why? Because they sought it not by faith, but as it were the works of the law. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone, a rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Paul writes that that rock was Christ. Bingo. All right, let's go back to uh, Revelation. Wow. And then we got to go back to Psalms. Now remember, Jeremiah produced, uh, pronounced gloom and doom on Jerusalem because they were evil. They wouldn't follow God's laws. Jeremiah 51.7, it said, Babylon hath been a golden cup, a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. Not angry, they're insane with evil. All right, uh, Revelation 17.4 basically tells you, yeah. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, decked with gold and precious stones of pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Hmm. Let's go back to Revelation 17 and verse 8. The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names are were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and is not and yet is. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And everybody will tell you, oh, Rome's on seven hills. Oh yeah, seven mountains. Well, yeah. So is Jerusalem, by the way. Yeah. Look it up. Verse 10. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seventh, uh, of the seven, and goeth into perdition and the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet but receive power as kings one hour with the beast these shall have one mind these shall have one mind they're single-minded oh and that's why i was reading uh in psalms remember Psalms 83, verse 5. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee, against the Lord and the Lord's chosen people. We'll get back to that. These shall have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the Lamb. And the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And they that are with him, the Lamb, are called and chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth 
are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. And if you're thinking is this is Vatican City, you are deceived. Big time. Let's go back to Psalms 83. Verse 2. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent, one mind. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom. Who's Edom? Edom is Esau. The brother of Jacob Israel that married into the Canaanites and the Hittites. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites. Who were the Ishmaelites? They were the firstborn son of Abraham. Not the chosen seed. The tabernacles of Edom and, Ish and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagarines. Jebal and Ammon and Amalek. Who's Amalek? Amalek was the grandson of Esau, Edom. God didn't say anything nice about Amalek. The Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. Who are the Canaanites? Who are the Philistines? Uh, King David killed Goliath. He was a giant. He was a Philistine. They had six fingers and six toes, and they were giants. And if you listen to the churches, you, they'll tell you, well, you know, uh, Genesis 6, uh, believing men married unbelieving women, and they had giants for children. Six fingers, six toes. And then God said, go in and kill them all. Because God doesn't want believing men marrying unbelieving women. Yeah, that's the nonsense that they will teach you. They don't want you to know what really happened in Genesis 6. No. No, they want you to think sons of God were just believing men. And the daughters of men were unbelieving women. Yeah. See any giants with six fingers and six toes running around today? You know, there's a reason why God flooded the earth. And I'm sorry, I don't think it was a local flood. Because if it was a local flood, God would not have needed to say, build an ark, just move. Oh yeah, okay, it's going to be a local flood, uh, Noah, so you know you don't really need to build a boat. You, all you got to do is move, because I'm going to destroy this area with a local flood. It's not going to be the whole earth. Don't worry about it. You know, just find yourself a high mountain. You'll be okay. Uh, I don't think so. Bible Genesis 6, it said the waters covered the whole earth. I believe the Bible, and that's good enough for me. But there's people that teach a local flood. And they can't figure out where the Canaanites came from. Well, who did Ham marry? The Bible doesn't tell you. Doesn't tell you who he married. Logic would dictate he married one of the evil seed. Verse 8, Asher also is joined with them. Who? The evil ones that want to destroy Israel. They have hope in the children of Lot, Selah. Do unto them as unto the Midianites, as to Sisera, as to Jabin at the brook of Kishon. Who is Sisera? Sisera, I think that was uh, 
the book of Judges. He was a king of, I think, the Midianites. I think. A woman took a tent peg and pounded it through his temple when he was asleep. As to Jabin at the book of Kishon, which perished at Endor, they became as dung for the earth. You know what dung is? Uh, go into the bathroom, number two. That's what dung is. They became as dung for the earth. Make their do nobles like Oreb and like Zeb, yea, all their princes as Zeba and Zalmunna, who said, let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession. Yeah, they want to take God's houses in their possession. Verse 13, oh my God, make them like a wheel as the stubble before the wind. As the fire burneth a wood, and as the flame setteth the mountains on fire, so persecute them with thy tempest, and make them afraid with thy storm. The psalmist says, make them afraid with thy storm. Fill their faces with shame, that they may seek thy name, O Lord. Let them be confounded. What is confounded? Confused. Let them be confounded and troubled forever. How long is forever? Uh, forever. Yea, let them be put to shame and perish. What do you mean, let them perish? But we're supposed to preach the gospel to them and tell them how much God loves them and, 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 and wants them to, to come to Jesus. That's not what my Bible says. Let them be put to shame and perish, that men may know that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high over all the earth. Please don't get wrapped up in this sacred name stuff, people. You know, the YH, WH, the Yahweh, or Yahweh, or Jehovah, or Jehovah. Do any of us know how to pronounce the name? No, I don't think so. You know, uh, how about Emmanuel? God with us. It's in the Old and the New Testament. You don't like the, the New Testament Greek? Use the Old Testament Hebrew. Emmanuel. When I came to the Lord, I said, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. I will guarantee you, the Lord in heaven knew I was referring to him. Yeah. Because... And I was a baby, a baby in the Lord. I, I, I didn't know what name to call him. But the God of Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Israel, oh yeah. He knows. He knows. Let's take a look at Proverbs 28, verse 1. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Why? Because they have the lion of the tribe of Judah on their side. For the transgression of a land, many are the princes thereof, but by a man of understanding and knowledge, the state thereof shall be prolonged. A poor man that oppresseth the poor is like a sweeping rain, which leaveth no food. You know, it's like a flood. You get water, which you need for crops, but the sweeping rain just takes everything away. They that forsake the law praise the wicked. Isn't that what's going on today? Pride events? Oh, yeah. But such as keep the law contend with them. Yeah, we got to contend with the evil. Verse 5, evil men understand not judgment. Evil people don't understand judgment, but they that seek the Lord understand all things. Better is the poor that walketh in his uprightness than he that is perverse in his ways, though he be rich. Whoso keepeth the law is a wise son, 
But he that is a companion of riotous men shameth his father. Sadly, that was me in high school. He that by usury and unjust gain increaseth his substance. He shall gather it for him that will pity the poor. What, what group of people have unjust gain by usury? Take a guess. Verse 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. You don't want to hear the laws of God? You want to pray to the Lord? The Lord says your prayer is an abomination. Whoso causeth the righteous to go astray in an evil way, he shall fall himself into his own pit. But the upright shall have good things in possession. The rich man is wise in his own conceit, but the poor that hath understanding searcheth him out. Listen to this. When righteous men do rejoice, there is great glory. But when the wicked rise, and this is where we are today, but when the wicked rise, a man is hidden. The Lord is going to hide his people. Some of us, anyways. Well, some of some some I don't know what if us means me or uh, you know. I still don't know yet. Verse 13. Well, 12. When righteous men do rejoice, there is great glory. But when the wicked rise, a man is hidden. Verse 13. Listen to this carefully. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. See, God doesn't care if you go to the, 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 the booth where the guy brags about his sins to the Catholic priest. You want a, a confession booth? God doesn't care. You go in there and say, well, yeah, I, I cheated this guy out of money. And, and then uh, this other guy, I was sleeping with his wife three times. <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah, you know. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. Uh, wait a minute. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them. You got to forsake your sins. Them shall have mercy. You won't hear that taught in the Catholic Church, will you? No. Happy is the man that feareth alway, but he that hardeneth heart, but he that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief. Sometimes people harden their hearts, and sometimes God hardens their hearts. Usually, from what my reading is after the people have hardened their own hearts a number of times. That's what happened to Pharaoh. Pharaoh hardened his heart several times. And then the Lord hardened his heart. Searing conscience with a hot iron. Verse 15. As a roaring lion and as a raging bear, so is a wicked ruler over the poor people. And if you think by... Uh, if you think Dementia Joe is, is in charge, you're a fool. Verse 16, the prince that wanteth understanding is also a great oppressor, but he that hateth covetousness shall prolong his days. What is covetousness? You're greedy. You want what everybody else has. Do I want what the rich bankers have? Not on your life. I want what Christ has. A man that doeth violence to the blood of any person shall flee to the pit. Let no man stay him. 
Yeah, they're, they don't know it, but they're running to hell, and no man's going to stop them. 18. Whoso walketh uprightly shall be saved, but he that is perverse in his ways shall fall at once. He that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread, but he that followeth after vain persons shall have poverty enough. You work hard, the Lord will bless it. But you want to follow after the evil people? You're going to be poor. To have respect of persons is not good. For, for a piece of bread that man will transgress. He that hasteth to be rich hath an evil eye. And considereth not the poverty that shall come upon him. You can be rich in this world, but poor in the world to come. He that rebuketh a man afterwards shall find more favor than him that flattereth with the tongue. You know, if you do something wrong, isn't it better to be rebuked by a friend that'll tell you the truth than to have, like in business, a yes man always telling an evil boss, oh yeah, boss, you're, you're right, you're doing the right thing. 24. Whoso robbeth his father or his mother and saith, It is no transgression. The same is the companion of a destroyer. And we're not talking about a navy ship here. He that is of a proud heart stirreth up strife. You ever meet people that stir up strife? They're all over the internet. But he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. Oh, that's why I've been gaining weight. Yeah. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. You ever hear people say, Oh, follow your heart. Follow your heart. The Bible says the heart is deceitful. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. But whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. He hath given unto the poor... He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack, but he that hideth his eyes shall have many a curse. You see people in need and you've got plenty to spare, but you turn your face away from them. His eyes shall have many a curse. When the wicked rise, men hide themselves, but when they perish, the wicked, the righteous increase. Boy, I'll tell you what, there's a lot of, whew, God's people are going to, they're going to be hidden one day. But we're not there yet. So this is the end of Hidden Part 2. God's people. I guess there's going to be a Part 3 because I don't like going over much of an hour anymore. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen.